Hello future engineers, today I'm going to discuss uh, the solutions to problems on the calculations of loadings and the distribution of loadings as well as the application of the 2015 uh, NECP. So here is the first problem. The cantilever threshold is one of the interior trusses that are spaced 4.5 meters apart. The wind comes from the left at a maximum speed of 250 km per hour. Assume wind pressure coefficient to be 0.6 and that the top cords weigh 40 newtons per meter, the webs weigh 35 newtons per meter, and the bottom cords weigh 30 newtons per meter. So since these are the only information, we will assume that the roofings, roof loading ceilings attached to the bottom cords and other uh, mechanical and fixtures are incorporated in this specified uh, uniform weight of the top cords, bottom cords, and the webs. So determine the force in member CE considering all loads. So this is the cantilever truss. This is member CE. So we have to compute the wind load first, which is equal to wind pressure coefficient. Oh, sorry, the wind pressure projected upon the vertical surface is equal to 0 0.0473 velocity squared, uh, the simple calculations, in, in pascals. So we have F1, F1 at the ends, then 2 F1 at the center because the tributary area for this center joint is double the tributary area of the end joints. So, so that's why you have to have one there. So the pressure is 0 0.0473 times velocity square in pascals divided by 1000 to make it kilopascals. So 2.956 kilopascals. So F1 therefore is wind pressure coefficient 0 0.6 times the pressure times the tributary area, which is the spacing 4.5 meters apart by 1.5, which is half of 3. So this is the tributary height. Then for the center joint, 3 meters. For the topmost joint, another 1.5 as tributary height. So F1, therefore, which is 0.6 wind pressure coefficient times the pressure times the tributary area. which is 4.5 times 1.5, so 11.972 kilonewtons. 2F1 is times 2 of that, so 23.944 kilonewtons. Then for the weight, for F2, so 2F2 at the center joint, F2 at the extreme right joint. Only the top cord will be subjected to wind pressure. So F2 equals 0 0.6 times 2.956 times 24.5 times 2. The tributary uh, width is 2 meters, half of 4. And for the center joint, it's 4. For the last joint, it is 2 again. So 2 F2 equals 31.925 kilonewtons. Then W1. W2, W3, W4, and W5. <coughs> For W1, it is equal to 0 0.04, the uniform weight of the top cord. The length of this top cord is 5, so half is 2.5 because the principle, the weight will be distributed half to its ends of the member. So W1 is quantity 0 0.04 times 2.5. Then we also have this bottom cord 0 0.03 times 2. So that is W1. 0 0.04 times 2.5 plus 0 0.03 times 2. So 0.16 kilonewtons. W2 
is 0 0.04 times 5 plus we have two webs here 0 0.035 times 1.5 then 0 0.035 times 2.5 only because the total length is 5 so 0 0.34 w3 uh, 0 0.04 times 2.5 plus 0 0.035 times half of 6 3 so 0 0.04 times 2.5 plus 0 0.035 times 3 0.205 W4, bottom chord 0 0.03 times 4 plus 0 0.035 times 1.5. 0 0.035 times 1.5, 0 0.03 times 4. So 0 0.1725, then W5 is 0 0.04 times uh, 0 0.035 times 2.5 plus 0 0.035 times 3 plus 0 0.03 times 2. So 0.2525. Then let's consider the forces left of section 1 dash 1. So that is six, section 1 dash 1. And the uh, section members are 3. So the 2 meet at A. So we sum up moment about A. But before that, FCE is moved along its line of action at C. There are two components, the horizontal and the vertical. The horizontal component passes through A, so we don't mind. We only consider the vertical component, which is, which is FCE times 3 over 5, because the slope is uh, 4 horizontal, 3 vertical, 5 by continuous, so times 3 over 5. So summation moment about A equals 0, clockwise as positive, so we have FCE times 3 over 5 times 8, the moment arm. So C times 3 over 5 times 8. Then here 0. So here we have 2 F1, which is 31.925. The moment arm is 3. Then plus, let's combine W2 to F2 and W4. The moment arm is 4. So W2.34 plus 2 F2. 31.925 plus W4.1725, then the moment arm is 4, then no more, equal 0. So FCE is negative 41.996 kilonewtons. So FCE is 41.996 kilonewtons compression. So that's the force in member CE due to the loads shown. For the next problem, a simply supported interior steel beam area of steel section wide plants 12,400 mm square must carry the following loads aside from its own weight. So we have leg load of 3.5 kilopascals, earthquake load of 3 kilopascals. These beams are spaced 3 meters apart on a simple span of 9 meters. Determine the critical factor moment in the beam in kilonewton meter considering a floor reinforced concrete slab of 125 mm 125 mm thick of course so determine the critical moment in the beam using 2015 NSCP the critical moment in the beam is equal to the highest uniform load from the load combination WU times L square over 8 where L is 9 so we compute for WU, the highest of all load combinations by 2015 NACP. But before that, let's compute the dead load, which consists of the weight of the simply supported uh, steel beam, then plus the weight, uniform weight of the slab in kilopascals, uh, sorry, in kilonewton per meter also which is equal to specific weight of concrete times 0.125 times the spacing, which is 3 meters. So W dead load is 2.4 times 9.81 times 0.125 times 3, the spacing, plus the weight of the steel beam, which is 12, which is specific gravity of steel is 7.86 times 9.81 times 12,400 divided by 1,000 square to convert this to meter square. 
so that it will be consistent in kilonewton per meter, 9.785 kilonewtons per meter. Then W live load is 3.5 times spacing 3, so 10.5 kilonewtons per meter. W earthquake load is 3 times 3, so 9 kilonewtons per meter. Then we have here the NECP 2015 load combinations. Uh, let's evaluate first one and up to equation five perhaps then we just uh, do not compute six and seven because if i think these formulas will not control so for example to 203 the seven compared to 203 the five so 203 the five will have greater first term equal second term but because of this third term not present in the third term in equation 203 the 7 so hydrostatic or earth pressure lateral earth pressure is zero so definitely this will not control over 203 the 5 same is true with 203 the 6 because there's no wind load given and our lateral earth pressure given no so it's only 0.9 of the so for w w first formula 1.4 of dead load 9.785 plus 0 to 2 feet so 13.699 only for the second formula 1.2 of 9.785 0 0 plus 1.6 of live load which is 10.5 0 h and this last term is 0 also so 28.542 equation 203 does 1.2 of 9.785 plus 1.6 of 0 plus 0.5 of live load because there's no wind load so it's only 16.992 to 203 4 1.2 of 9.785 0 1.0 of 0 plus 0.5 of live load then 0 so 16.992 only then equation 203 5 1.2 of 9.785 plus 1.0 of 10 point of 9 rather plus 0.5 of 10.5 we use 0.5 for f1 because it is only one for phases of public assembly for live logic in excess of 4.8 kilopascals and for garage live load so the live load here is originally 3.5 kilopascals which is less than 4.8 kilopascals so that's why we use f1.5 so equation 2 that 3 the 6 does not control and equation 203 the 7 does not control so the highest is 28.542 that's the critical uh, uniform load then the maximum moment is w l square over 8 so 28.542 times 9 square over 8 so mu equals 289 kilonewton meter. So that's it for this example. So for the last problem, determine the actual live load to be carried by a typical interior column at the ground floor for a five-story car park space with a live load of 6 kilopascals and a flat roof live load of uh, flat roof live loading of 2 kilopascals. The columns are spaced 10 meters apart in both perpendicular directions. So for the solution, remember that the building is a 5-story car park space. So it is like a garage where the live load cannot be reduced or must not be reduced as stated in the code because naturally if we have peak hours or it is possible that the entire uh, spaces park spaces of the building will be fully occupied and also for the roof load that should not be uh, reduced as stated in the code so this is the five-story building that's the roof load two kilopascals uh, live load at the six 
speed floor is 6 kilopascals, it cannot be reduced. Fourth floor cannot be reduced, 6 kilopascals. Third floor cannot be reduced. Second floor cannot be reduced. Then this is the ground floor column. Of course, the load at the ground floor will be resisted by the ground. So all the loads above will be carried by this column at the ground floor. Now, the load on this ground floor column would be equal to 6 kilopascals times 4. Then times the tributary area, which is 10 square only. Then plus roof line load of 2 kilopascals times 10 square. So force or axial load, axial live load of the column in the ground floor, interior column of the ground floor is there are 4 floors carrying 6 kilopascals load times 10 square plus the roof live load times 10 square. So therefore, it is equal to 2,600 kilonewtons. So these are the uh, solutions to these three problems here. If you encounter the same problem, and take note that we computed the wind loads based on the uh, basic formula 0 0.0473 velocity square in Pascals from uh, theory one concept and that is derived by uh, converting the uh, kinetic energy of moving wind of volume 1 cubic meter into pressure or into energy. Then if you're still new to my YouTube channel, please don't forget to subscribe so that I would be uh, inspired to do more lecture videos related to your courses in civil engineering. So thank you for watching and Bye-bye.